Hey, what's up? I'm going to teach you today how I set up my Canon DSLR's autofocus system to get the absolute best and most importantly, fastest results. So today I'm going to talk to you about how I set up my Canon DSLR's autofocus system. Uh, and this applies to the DSLR. So it's like the Canon 5D, 1D, all the cameras that still have a mirror. The mirrorless cameras like the EOS R5 and all that are a little different. And I actually made a video about how to set up those autofocus settings already um, for the R5, which I assume will translate to the R6. But today we're talking about the DSLRs. And I'm going to show you a bunch of tricks that I use on all of the DSLRs. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a little extra that we can set up for the Canon 1DX Mark III. So the DSLRs have been the standard Canon camera for years, right? Most people, when they pick up a DSLR, they're probably just gonna use this autofocus button on the front to set up their autofocus. So I separate the focus from the shutter button back to this autofocus on button. The idea being that I can hold my thumb down on the AF on button while pressing the shutter to take my picture. Um, the idea of this is that basically I can leave my thumb on the AF on button in servo mode and the camera will focus. And then when I don't want it to focus, say if somebody gets in the way or I'm taking a picture of something that's not moving that quickly, I can just take my thumb off the AF on button and take pictures however fast I want or whenever I want. By separating these, we get a lot more control. In addition to that, I also configure this asterisk button, this little star button over here to the right, I can figure that to be a, a registered point or an HP point, I think Canon calls it. So we got a lens on our camera. We can go in here and change some settings now. So the first thing you wanna do with this camera is turn off AF one shot and switch over to AI servo. You can use AF one shot, but the whole advantage of this is that you can hold down that AF button and let go of it when you don't wanna focus anymore. So it doesn't really lend itself to using AF one shot because otherwise you're just jamming the button over and over. You certainly can, but I prefer to use servo. Um, on the 1DX Mark III, you're gonna hold down this drive AF button and just go over and change it to servo in the top screen. Uh, and different cameras are gonna be different, but all you're looking for is to go from one shot to AI servo. Next, we're gonna jump into the menus. Now, every camera is a little bit different, but on the newer cameras, you're gonna go to the orange series of menus, generally to the right side of things. Or is that right for you guys? Whichever way, the right side of things for you guys. And we're going to look for customize buttons, custom controls. So once we're in that orange menu, we're gonna look for custom controls. On the 1DX Mark III, it's the orange menu number six. So the big thing you're gonna change is you're gonna change your shutter button from being metering an AF start over to like the asterisk or AE lock. And all that's gonna do is now when you push the shutter button down halfway, it's just gonna engage the exposure lock rather than engaging the autofocus and the exposure lock or metering start. Another thing that I change, I change this little back joystick to direct selection. And what that lets you do is you can just grab that stick and move it wherever you want at any time and it'll start moving the autofocus point. Uh, that really speeds things up quite a bit. Now the second thing we're gonna do is on the asterisk button, uh, we're gonna change that over to metering an AF start, but we also gotta go in here and hit info to get the detail set. Now in this camera, it gives us the option to do a lot of things, but all we really wanna make sure is tell it to instead of going to the regular AF point, we wanna go to this registered AF point. Now what the registered AF point or the HP point is, is basically you can tell the camera that I want this secondary point to be set. Now, this is something almost no one ever knows about these cameras is the fact that you can set a secondary point. So the idea behind this is basically that you have your left or regular point, whatever you wanna do, and you can move that around just like you normally do. I generally use the small tiny box with the box inside of it, or I use the square with four around it. There's no really good way to show you guys this through the viewfinder, so I hope you have a general understanding of what I'm talking about here. But basically, the AF on button will work just like it always has for you. Whatever mode you pick, whatever thing you do, you can leave it that way. By going over and hitting this little button, this little grid button here, we can now, looking through the viewfinder, hit the ISO button on the 1DX Mark III, but it's the button with the little indentation on it. It's a little bit different on every camera, but what that's gonna do is register a point. So now 
If I were to look through the viewfinder, I have two points that should look exactly the same. And now you can use the AF on button to use the point that you can move, which you can move it like you normally would. And then I can use the star button to activate that other point. So now what you might be thinking is, well, why in the world would you want this? Why would you want two points? Like I can't focus in two places at once. What I like to do is I set up this registered point or the one assigned to the asterisk button to the right side of the frame. For me, mentally, right, move it to the right. It makes sense to me. So I leave that point on the right side and I move my regular autofocus point to the middle. And so then I have the middle of the frame like I normally would, and I have over to the right. However, now that middle point, I'll often move it to the left. And then by just pressing in on the quick control stick, I can bounce that point back and forth between the middle and the left. So now, really quickly, I can use my AF on button, and I can focus on the left side of the frame. And then I can use the star button and focus on the right side of the frame. So I can quickly focus on things coming from my left and things coming from my right. And if at any time I wanna focus right in the middle, I can just hit that center button and it moves my focus point right back to the middle. This is extremely useful when you're covering sports or photojournalism or anything fast moving, weddings, events. Um, I actually learned it from a friend at RIT who taught me about it for shooting hockey because a lot of times you want that point in the center to shoot the goalie and then you move that other point off to the left or the right whichever side of the ice you're on, so the people coming in, you can keep them off to the side of the frame. It's really, really nice, because you can just really quickly go left, right, left, right. You know, you don't have to move anything or change any dials, and you aren't trying to do all these advanced setups. So that's kind of the basics for most DSLRs. Now, the Canon 1DX Mark III has additional functionality that the other cameras do not have. Uh, and this is where things get a little cooler, and one of the reasons I really like this camera. When we go back to the menus, we're gonna go to Autofocus, Menu 4. Inside of that, we're gonna see Subject Tracking Settings, and we're gonna tell it to enable for people. And Subject Switching, you can change it around. I have it set to Disable, though. So from there, now, your camera will track people's faces. However, this doesn't work when you're using a single point or a box or anything like that. It only works when you use a broad area of the frame or the whole entire frame. So what we wanna do is we can once again hold down the grid button on the right and we start hitting this MFN button. And then we go around and select until it just has that whole border around the entire viewfinder. So now that you have the entire thing selected, you once again wanna register a point. So on the 1DX Mark III, you hold down that little button to the right of the asterisk and you hit the ISO button at the same time. So now all I see is that big entire outline. And what that means is we can now track on faces. So again, you guys can't see it, but if I were to focus now on my little video monitor here, it'll track my face or it tries to track people, which in my opinion is pretty good for faces. I've tried this on boxing, tried it on golf the other day. Anything with people's faces, it generally finds them pretty quick as long as they're legible. It's kind of like face tracking, but not fully there. But it's through an optical viewfinder, which is really cool. So now that we have it set up to the face tracking, we still want to have our other mode. So we go back in and we've registered the face tracking, the big outline, to the HP point. They both look the same right now and they both do the same thing. So all we got to do is simply go in, hit the little grid button, and hit the MFN button to swap to the mode we normally want. So now my left thumb, my AF on button does single point, and then my right button does the people tracking. So quickly I can move that AF button around just like normal and I have my single point, my grid, whatever I would want to normally use. Again, for covering sports, I generally use the box with the four expanded boxes around it. You know, the little, kind of looks like a little cross or an X. And then I just hit the star button on the right and I have people tracking. Really great to get the best out of both worlds with these cameras. Now, if you watch my R5 video, you'll definitely say, well, this sounds familiar. <laughs> and it's because it totally is. I actually set it up on this first and then I looked for it on the R5. So now we kind of have the best of both worlds. You can use them flawlessly left and right. If you ever want to try a different mode out, well, whatever you set it to without registering it will be your AF on button. And whatever you register that to um, by holding down, again, on the 1DX Mark III, these the ISO and that little grid button, 
you're going to be able to then register that to your star or asterisk point. I hope this was easy to follow and I hope you guys can do this on the older cameras. Um, it has been a thing since at least 2010 or 11 when I switched to Canon. Um, and it was one of my favorite features when I got these cameras back in the day. I was shooting with these older cameras. The autofocus was pretty good, but moving the point around was kind of hard. So it was nice to be able to have two points set up and I could instantly just swap from one to another. So I hope this helps you out. It's something I know a lot of people don't really talk about and a lot of people don't really know about. So uh, it's helped me make so many sports pictures over the years and so many other pictures. It's just really, really fast way to work with the DSLRs that I think a lot of people don't really know about. If you want to learn more about photography, and photojournalism, of course, subscribe here on my YouTube channel. But also, I'd really love it if you went and checked out my podcast, Reciprocity Podcast. Interview amazing photographers from all over the world. About 12 episodes in now, and it's a lot of fun. Even have some bonus content over on Patreon for people that want to support the show. And always go follow me on Instagram, Brett in Real Life, and ask me questions there or here or both places. I'd love to help out, love to help you learn how to set up these cameras better, or make new work. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.